today with a little video that I thought about because someone left me a comment asking me this question and I forget that I have a lot of knowledge and efficiency in baking and cooking and stuff like that and I don't really think about those things like one of the, the question was like if I bake all day like my kitchen is a disaster like do you have any tips or tricks to like make it more efficient and less cleanup at the end of the day and stuff like that. And at first I thought, oh, I don't really have any. And then I started thinking about it. And I actually did have multiple jobs that I've had in the past. I was the only person in the kitchen. I did my own dishes. And a lot of the places didn't even have a dishwasher because they were small businesses or small, you know, startup mom and pop shops or, you know, self-owned bakeries, like stuff like that. So I actually do, I have learned ways to minimize cleanup and stuff like that so I thought I would share those with you since we're in the midst of the baking season right now and everybody is baking up a storm so I thought I'd share those with you so besides cleanup I figured I'd start with efficiency in the kitchen with baking I try to teach this in a lot of my videos which is why a lot of my videos are longer because I kind of try and tell you the order of operations of how things should be done so that you're wasting less time in the kitchen. Like whipping your butter and sweetener while you're measuring out your ingredients and you're getting your pan ready and you're preheating your oven and stuff like that. But also if you're baking multiple things in a day. Like for Thanksgiving I baked a pumpkin pie and a cheesecake. So I had a pie pan and I had a springform pan that I was making things in but they both baked at 350 so what I started with was my pie crust because that has to chill first so you start with the things that have to chill so I made my pie crust I let it chill then you have to bake your cheesecake crust first before you make the cheesecake so then after that I did my graham cracker crust for my cheesecake and baked that then I rolled out my crust for my pumpkin cheesecake while that was baking and then cooling because that can just sit on the back burner until whenever you're ready for it. So then you roll out your pumpkin pie crust that has to chill while you're making your filling. Then you can make your pumpkin pie filling in your mixer and then I make my cream my cheesecake fillings a lot of times in my food processor. So a lot of times I don't do it on camera because I don't feel like bringing out my food processor I'll just do it in my mixer but if you're doing two things one you need a mixer for, one you need a food processor for, you can kind of do them at the same time. So I was making, I was whisking up my sweetener and pumpkin puree that has to whip for a while while I was whipping my cream cheese and sweetener together in the food processor. So I was kind of making two fillings at once and then at the end you make both of them, you put them in your crusts and your pie pan and they bake at 350. Now you do kind of have to keep an eye, obviously if you're baking two things at once, you got to kind of keep track in your head like, okay, well I got to turn this one because the pumpkin pie takes a lot longer to bake than a cheesecake does. And also the cheesecake, it's also a toss up like, because I like to turn my oven off for my cheesecake and let it sit in there so that it doesn't crack. But if you're putting toppings on it and stuff, it doesn't really matter. You can always fix cracks on cheesecakes. So I forego that for efficiency. So the pie has to bake longer, so I gotta turn my cheesecake a little bit earlier. So I set it for the low temperature, or the low time, which most cheesecakes are like 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how thick you're making it. So you set it for 20, but then you know you gotta bake your pumpkin pie for 15 more minutes and then turn that. So you, it's kind of a little bit of math you gotta do in your head. And also opening up the oven multiple times while you're baking might add some time onto your baked goods. But you're getting it all done at once and you pull it out and I think after I did the cheesecake, I pulled the cheesecake out and put it on the top of my stove and let my pumpkin pie keep cooking. And then so that your pumpkin pie doesn't crack, you can also do the same trick. So when the pumpkin pie was done, I turned off the oven, put my cheesecake back in, and just let them both chill in there until they were like kind of room temperature and then threw them into the refrigerator. So that's one way to make it kind of efficient while baking. Also like if you're doing something that needs to chill and then you're making a bunch of cookie dough. 
you know, most cookie dough can either sit on the counter or sit in the refrigerator, depending on the recipe. So you can make all this stuff, reuse your bowls over and over again, because you don't need to soap and wash and rinse all your stuff every time you make a recipe. If anything, you just want to be careful with like extracts, like you don't want to use the same spoon straight from peppermint to almond extract, things like that. That matters. Most other stuff doesn't. You can do a quick wipe out on a lot of doughs as long as they're not like super sticky. You can reuse your bowls over and over again for different recipes as you're baking throughout the day. You don't have to wash every bowl every time. Same thing with your measuring spoons. You can give them a rinse and a wipe with a paper towel to make sure they're not wet and you're good to go. So when I start my day with baking, I always do like an order of operations for my day. That is going to help you a lot. Like figure out what you can do when, what needs to chill, what you can bake. If you're chilling something and you're making a cake, which you're making the batter and baking it right away, do the thing that has to chill first, bake your cake, and then once the cake is baked, you can go and make whatever you're chilling. So it's all kind of planning your day out makes it a lot easier at the end of the day to do all your baking and get it done efficiently. Because being a baker, pastry chef, chef, cook, anything, you can be good at it, but if you're not efficient at it, you're not going to get as far as other people in the industry. That's kind of why I got to where I was. I didn't go to school, like college, for culinary. But I ended up at a sous chef position and then I was acting executive chef for a couple of months also. And I also have ran my own kitchens. It's just being efficient at being in the kitchen. So you learn these things along the way, but it's also almost second nature. And some people, they're great at cooking, but they cannot do that in their head and be efficient on a line, which is really fast pace, which I don't like being on the line. I do and I don't. It's like kind of an adrenaline rush and like camaraderie with your peeps and I do kind of miss working with Adam on the line every now and then but it is stressful and just getting your butt kicked every night you know with orders is just it's something I'm glad is in my past but long story short it comes with practice but being a home baker obviously you're not under the stress of I gotta get this out right now so it's all just tips to help you figure out the best way to get things done so that your kitchen isn't a disaster at the end of the day. So reusing bowls, reusing measuring spoons, measuring cups, stuff like that. Measuring on a scale keeps a lot of that down. You don't need to use the measuring cups. I still use measuring spoons. You don't have to. A teaspoon is usually four grams, but sometimes it's not because some things are lighter than others. So that's why I use teaspoons and tablespoons still for like smaller measurements. But weighing things on a scale makes it much easier. When you make something to completion, if you gotta throw it in the fridge, throw it in the fridge. If you wanna reuse your mixing bowl, put it into another bowl, wash your mixing bowl, make your next thing. If you have batters that you're making, like if I'm doing the cheesecake in the food processor, I am making sure when I scrape that food processor out, I am scraping every last bit of batter out of that bowl, off the blade, off the spatula, whatever, because less stuff that's on your mixers and your bowls and your food processor, the less it's going to take to clean them. So, and as I go, if I'm not going to be reusing something right away and it's really dirty, I soak it. I run the water as I'm doing something else. You know, I fill that bowl up while I'm measuring out the next ingredient, you know, something like that. I always soak whatever I'm not going to be using right away that's really dirty. And then don't put in your measuring spoons into that dirty bowl. Don't put, you know, something that's not really dirty into something that's super dirty. Because then you have to really wash it. You can just rinse your measuring spoons. You can rinse your spatulas and give them a wipe real quick. Like if they have batter on them. You don't have to soak them in the bowl with everything. And just have it ready to go for the next recipe. And I think the last tip is going to be clean as you go, put away as you go. So like I was making a bunch of different test recipes the other day. And if you're using a bunch of different extracts for different things, make sure you put the caps on and put them away after you're done. Or at least get them out of the way and organized so that when cleanup does come, you can just throw them back where they go. Depending on how big your kitchen is. If your kitchen's really big, you tend to leave things out 
and it makes the process harder to clean up. I have a small kitchen, so I try not to keep stuff out because it gets too cluttered. So if I pull something out and use it and I know I'm not going to need it for another recipe, I close it up and put it away. That way at the end, I don't have a ton of stuff all over every surface of my kitchen that I have to clean up. Reusing pans too, like baking pans and stuff like that. Like if you're using parchment paper, just take the parchment paper off, leave the pan there. If you're going to do another different kind of cookie, whatever, it'll be there ready to go. So stuff like that. I think that's about it for my baking tips. Biggest thing, just keep yourself organized. Put things away as you go. Clean as you go is a big one. That was really big in the restaurant. You don't keep your station dirty. It's always clean as you go because at the end of the day, it's easier to clean up. Because we did, there was no such thing in, in the kitchen as you leave before anything's, you know, cleaned up. Like you clean everything, you wipe every surface down, you do the floors every night. Does that always help happen at home? No. But that's where I learned my efficiency from is just working in kitchens my whole life. I hope this helps you guys in some way for your season of baking all your delicious baked goods and cookies this year and I hope my recipes help you. I'll put up a playlist right here of all my favorite keto holiday recipes. I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. I hope the next update video will be a baby. I'm still only four days away from the due date now, December 10th, so hopefully that'll be the next video. If not, it'll probably be a bakery tour because hopefully the bakery will be pretty much set and ready to go. So, hope to see you guys soon, and happy holiday keto baking. Bye, guys.